good morning everyone so i am dr raj mohan assistant professor from the department of public and industry so the topic for today's uh, discussion or the presentation will be on nutrition and its relation to the oral health uh, coming to the starting with uh, coming to the de definition of uh, nutrition and diet first we must know what is diet so diet is defined as the type and amount of food eaten daily by an individual and coming to the nutrition it is the sum of the process by which an individual takes in and utilizes food both have been given by fdi in the year 1994 so we are starting with the definition of diet and nutrition which are given by the fda in the year 1994 so you should know what is a balanced diet so balanced diet is the one which means a person's calorific needs and also which contains all the nutrients uh, in addition you should also the food should provide enough roughage to promote the peristaltic activities and also to satisfy the desire and the taste so what are the various nutritions so carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins and minerals in which you can see in the slide itself carbohydrates are providing maximum that is 55 to 65% of the proportion so coming to the another classification that is uh, micro and the macro nutrients so what are macro nutrients as the name goes they are needed in bulk quantities whereas micro nutrients they are required in the small amounts so carbohydrates fats proteins constitutes with the macro nutrients whereas vitamins and minerals which are required in a small amounts constitutes the micro nutrients Coming to the another system of classification where it goes like energy yielder, growth promoters, and protectors. Where energy yielders are the carbohydrates and fats, whereas proteins goes to the growth promoters. As you can know, almost uh, many of them who are going to gym and the bodybuilders will be going for protein intake. And the, finally, to the protectors, that is vitamins and minerals. And uh, simply, you can note that. both the water and oxygen though they are going to be essential for our life but are not included among the nutrients so started with the definition and what are the various classifications under which the nutrition can be defined and uh, finally you are going to start with each and every one of the nutrition that is carbohydrates so carbohydrates are the third major main constituent of our diet and are called the ready source of energy some of them are called a concentrated sort of source of energy which will be dealing later so carbohydrates are the ready source of energy for the body so it also contain carbon hydrogen or oxygen also they are chiefly stored in the liver and in the muscles as in the form of glycogen and average the diet has a 55 to 65% of the carbohydrate the daily average requirement is 4k calories per gram so and what are the classifications of carbohydrates there are three major types that is sugars starches and cellulose and the sugars can be further classified as mono or the disaccharides and starches are the polysaccharides and the cellulose also contains the polysaccharides so polysaccharides usually they are easily digestible as i already told it helps in the bulk of the body also thereby helping in the peristalsis activity so coming to the sugars as we all know simplest form of the carbohydrates so whether they and where they can be subdivided into glucose fructose sucrose lactose and maltose whereas and uh, so here you can see sucrose sucrose is the most commonly used sweetener also it has a various functions like it's a sweetener flavor blender body engagement and a bulking agent but it's an important uh, five mark or a important aspect which you have to know is sucrose plays a major role in caries formation so it is called as arch criminal for dental caries so how it is goes so usually sucrose when utilized by the bacteria it will be forming both the extracellular as well as the intracellular polysaccharides coming to the extracellular polysaccharides they will be uh, their function is to attach to the bacterial block to the 
tooth surface, whereas the intracellular polysaccharides, which will be acting as a reservoir, so thereby producing the initiating with the caries formation. That is the streptococcus mutans. So coming to the next one, that is fats. Fats are the hydrocarbons consisting of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These supply 30 to 35 percent of the total calories. It's a concentrated source. In carbohydrates, I told it as a ready source, whereas fats are the concentrated source of, of energy. So it provides 9k calorie of energy, 9k calorie of per gram, whereas carbohydrates, I told it as 4k. So it is composed of glycerol and fatty acids, like how we are, have it as a glycogen. Here it is glycerol and fatty acids. Uh, which may be a saturated or a unsaturated one. And the classification of fat goes is like simple lipids, that is triglycerides, compound lipids, that is phospholipids, derived lipids, like cholesterol. And also the various fatty acids, which is unsaturated or the saturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids is butyric acid, whereas unsaturated fatty acids, like polyunsaturated fatty acids, you will name it as PUFA, which includes linoic acid, oleic acid, as well as arachidonic acid, which helps well in the growth. It's a very, very essential for our growth. So, basically, the function of fat is provides energy, especially during the starvation, and acts as a vehicle for the vitamins A, D, E, K, that is, which are which we will be uh, discussing later, that are called the fat soluble vitamins, which will be acting as a vehicle. It is stored as a, a fat will be and as a source of energy. So, with the already told it as the essential fatty acids like PUFA, which are very, very useful for our body. So, proteins. So, proteins are the most important, most essential of all the nutrients of the food. And also, it helps for the necessary growth and repair process of the body tissues. Mm -hmm. Proteins are usually made up of mainly amino acids. Also, it may contain it. Nitrogen, carbohydrogen, carbon, hydrogen also may have phosphorus or sulfur. So, there are 10 essential amino acids. These are the various 10 essential amino acids. And what proteins are going to do in our body? Usually, they are broken down in the gastrointestinal tract by the enzymes into simpler amino acids which are absorbed and passed onto the liver where they are getting metabolized. So, Daily requirement is again 4k calorie per gram. Except for fats, everything is 4k calorie per grams. And what are the various functions which because already I told like bodybuilding, repair and maintenance of the body tissues. So also maintaining the osmotic pressure in our body. So the amino acids which I told is always the building blocks of our body. So what are the various effects or the, what the deficiency is going to happen with this posture curve? as well as marasmus, the picture depicting both the protein deficiency syndromes. In oral health, what uh, effect the proteins are going to make up is, so it basically it is uh, helpful for the growth and development of the oral cavity, that is, if there is a deficiency, there will be a delayed eruption, retarded jaw growth. And patients with the LPT dentures, they will not be able to consume enough of the proteins, so there will be a decrease in the immunity function and thereby impairing the whole daily function. So, also you can find that the teeth of the malnourished children, like what we are having in the Kwashiaka or a marasmus condition also, the teeth will be having to be crowded, rotated and is underdeveloped. So, we started with the definition, what are the various classification, coming to the carbohydrates, fats, proteins and finally we are going to the micronutrients that is vitamins. So, coming to vitamins, basically it's a micronutrients also essential for the normal growth and development of the body. These do not supply energy but also be, but they have a lot of protective functions as they are deficiency or they lack in the diet which may cause through, uh, various deficiency diseases is like vitamin deficiency diseases. And the major classification of uh, vitamins is fat soluble and water soluble. Vitamin A, D, E, K comes under fat soluble vitamins and whether, whereas uh, vitamin B complex and vitamin C 
that goes with the water soluble vitamins why b complex mean because there are a lot of vitamin b like b1 b2 b3 b6 b12 majorly so so coming to the fat soluble vitamins you can see so starting with the vitamin a vitamin a is also called as the retinol so what are the various sources you can see the various animal sources as well as the plant sources and the major functions it includes uh, it is uh, important for the normal vision also they maintain the integrity and function of the glandular and the epithelial tissue of the body also helpful in the support of the skeletal growth so this is the requirement that is for the adults it is usually 5000 international units per day and what are the various deficiency symptoms are the deficiency findings of vitamin a is night blindness uh, that is uh, nectolopia bright red spots corneal cirrhosis and keratomalacia so in vitamin a deficiency with regard to the oral tissues it may cause the hyperkeratosis or the hyperplasia of the gingival tissues in teeth usually the, there will be a slowdown or even there will be a eruption delay for the incisor of teeth and uh, in salivary glands you can see there will be some sort of atrophy and also in oral mucosa epithelial metaplasia can happen so coming to vitamin d one of the most important uh, vitamins so it is found in the food and synthesized by the action of the ultraviolet rays and ergosterol found in the skin forming a calciferol so the other name for vitamin d is polycalciferol so it is also called as sunshine vitamin or the acidic vitamin and is needed for the bones and teeth so especially for our teeth and the bones vitamin d plays a major major role and these are the various sources of vitamin d and as i told it is helpful for the absorption of the calcium and that by helping to the formation of the bone and the strength of the bones and teeth and maintain of the calcium homeostasis and skeletal integrity the major deficiency you can see in children it is rickets and in adults it is osteomalacia and these are the various uh, dairy recommends for, uh, for adult or infants or the children so as i told it is very very essential for our oral health so the during the developmental and the calcification stage for the hyperplasia of the teeth can happen due to the deficiency and also uh, in rickets they can see there is a pitting and the plaque accumulation and subsequently the caries formation starts so coming to vitamin e which is also called as the tocopherol or the anti sterility vitamins it deficiency usually is rare in humans and these are the various sources of vitamin e and uh, one important function of vitamin e is uh, it's an antioxidant thereby it can scavenge the free radicals formed in the redox reaction throughout the body and usually the deficiency is very very rare and uh, if there is uh, there may be anatomic changes in the nervous system it is uh, ataxia or loss of pain sensation hemolytic and hypoplastic anemia can happen so that is the recommends that is 10 mg per day for an adult coming to the vitamin k again it is very very important in our oral health because it helps in the normal blood coagulation so these are the various sources for vitamin k here you can see and uh, its function is to stimulate the production and the release of the certain coagulation factors so deficiency usually the prothrombin content of the blood is marked it decreased and as the blood clot in time is considered to be prolonged so there will be a bleeding so without vitamin k and the clotting process bleeding uh, blood cannot be from uh, from a clot so this is the daily requirements so other than the bleeding disorders associated with vitamin k it is found to be required for the growth of the bacteria or melanin and nucleus an organism which is closely associated with periodontal diseases so this is the study which depicts a vitamin k role in regard to oral health so this concludes with the fat soluble vitamins so we started with vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k so these are the various fat soluble vitamins